We'll be talking about what this biometric exercise really is so we can all get uh, some education or schooling as I promised. But really, you've heard the complaints already. It will, it's slow. Some say it will lead to confusion on the day itself and all that. What are your immediate reactions to what we just heard? Well, thank you very much and good evening to your listeners. Um, we had a complaint uh, that uh, you played a short while ago, that the process is slow and that is going to uh, bring about some confusion at the registration center when the actual exercise uh, begins on the 24th of March. Um, no, contrary to what the gentleman said, uh, we don't think that the process is going to be that slow. Um, you know, this is a pilot exercise. That, what we did was a pilot exercise, and um, because the people were being introduced to the equipment for the first time, um, they had to take a little bit of time to get uh, used to the equipment. And so for the first day... The officials, you mean? Yes, the officials. For the first day, it was um, expected that the first day of the exercise was going to be a bit slow. Mm. And uh, especially because people were curious to know what was going on at the registration center. Mm. Everybody was so eager to go through the process that brought a little bit of pressure mm -hmm. on the officials. Mm. And so the slowness at the start was something that was to be expected. Okay. Um, I monitored some of the registration pilots in uh, other places, and as the days uh, progressed, second, third day, you know, the process became very, very fast. And in a particular instance, on a particular day, they were able to register over 200 of the people that uh, came to the registration center on that day. So we think that um, with that kind of speed, uh, we won't experience any queues at the, not, not too long queues at the registration centers mm -hmm. when we go into the actual exercise. So what was the nature of the pilot? Where, uh, which places did they cover for how many days? And someone, he also complained, I think the first one, that he didn't even hear about it, was passing by when he saw something happening and decided to go and find out what was going on. Yes, uh, indeed the pilot was not so much publicized uh, because it was intended just to open it to the public in selected places. Okay. And so we limited our education, our publicity on the pilot to those places that the pilot was going to take place. Mm. So it wasn't like a whole national publicity that we were given the pilot. Mm. And that is how come a lot of people didn't hear about the pilot. But the people in the vicinity where these pilot exercises took place uh, were actually aware mm. of uh, an exercise of that nature. Mm. Yes. So, and where? I was asking. Uh, yes, how indeed, many districts, uh, we how select, did you select we, them? We, we selected two centers in every region across the country. That means we used 20 centers for the pilot. And uh, we selected those centers carefully. Were they districts or just centers? There were centers in the districts. In the districts. Yes. But there wasn't more than one center in a district. There wasn't more than one center okay. in a district. All right. And what we did was that for every region, we picked one urban center and one rural center. Okay. So that um, in the urban center, we were expecting to see the kind of pressure that would be brought on the equipment mm. and how the officials were going to cope with the pressure. Mm and uh, whether the equipment will be able to stand the 11 hours that uh, we were going to do in the actual registration exercise. Mm. And uh, the rural areas, we wanted to give the rural folk an insight into what the biometric is about. Mm -hmm. And then again, to see how the um, rural folk would be forthcoming with the responses that we expect of them when they come to the registration center. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Let me bring you back into the discussion and, and ask you, uh, my, as my first question, really, is everybody who wants to vote in December supposed to register afresh? Well, first, let me thank you for inviting me. Right. And say good evening to your viewers. Mm. Yes, this is a complete replacement of the old voters' register. Very important point, believe me. I've heard so many people out there who you take for granted 
that oh they know someone was saying oh they'll come to Ghana in December what am I seeing this oh it's December when uh, you have your election I come and vote would you how will you register oh I'm not supposed to register it's for those who are not on the list yes that is that is a wrong <laughs> impression right actually everyone who's registered before has to read register and that means it's a complete replacement of the old voters register we are starting a fresh register mm. so that is the exercise mm. that we are doing it's a replacement exercise Okay, mm -hmm. replacement exercise and it's a complete exercise that you are doing. So why are we calling it a biometric registration this time around? What does that mean? Well, it's simply a departure from the old system where we're purely collecting textual or what I call biographic data. Mm -hmm. In this exercise, we are also going to add biometric data. That is, we're going to collect the fingerprints mm -hmm. and then facial architecture of the voters. I see. And that is what we mean by biometrics. Mm. You see the technology of using the devices that will capture the photographs and then the fingerprints is what we call the technology. So we are going to apply biometric technology. So everybody will have their finger. It's like, you know, uh, when you get to the airport somewhere out there, the well, sometimes you have to you have to put your fingers on something to see whether it's you or it's not you. That is right. And they can actually ask you to put your eye in something and then they That's check right. you out. So everybody is going to have their finger taking, a fingerprint. Definitely. All ten fingers. Definitely. Taking. And how, how, what about the facial architecture you mentioned? We are going to use digital cameras or mm -hmm. webcams, which okay. has been programmed to take certain features of the face. Okay. And when that is captured, it will be used also what we call facial recognition. So we are going to apply two biometric technologies, that is fingerprint identification yes. and also facial uh, recognition. So for those who participated in the pilot, yes. it means they are already registered. No. They are not. No. That's another critical point that we it should is. address. Because you'd be surprised if someone would say they've done You're it right. and You're not right. go back. A lot of people have been asking because right. we actually went through the process as if mm -hmm. it is the real thing. We gave them ID cards mm -hmm. and then they went through the process as mm -hmm. they would do on the D-Day. Okay. But there is a small difference. Okay. They are cards. We have embossed pilot. Okay. So the voter ID cards that they are holding on now, mm. in fact, some of them even were asked to bring it back. They mm. were retrieved. Mm. But those who have them, they will see the word pilot, mm. and that will be different from the, the one that we issue during the registration itself. Okay. So these are the two differences between the pilot and the main registration. Great. Let me come back to Christian and ask him. So uh, you, you mentioned March, is it March 25? 25. Yes, March 24. Well, the exercise begins on March 24th and will end on the 5th of May. Okay. Yes. So that's how many days? That, that's, that's um, I think, about 43 days. But the actual registration exercise is in 40 days. Mm. And um, what we have done is that we have actually grouped the, uh, the registration centers into clusters. Okay. And uh, we are doing this registration exercise in phases. So um, for the first phase, uh, we will put the team, that's the registration team. And let me quickly say that every um, cluster has a team. Mm -hmm. Every cluster has a team that will register at the four polling stations in the cluster. So at the start of the exercise, the registration team will be in a particular polling station in the cluster. And they will be there for 10 days. And uh, at the end of the 10 days, there will be a one day break. And the one day break is um, to uh, give the registration team um, the opportunity to do what we call end of registration uh, exercise and uh, also to um, go for supplies for the next phase of the registration exercise. So at the end of the 10 days, there is one day break and then we begin the second phase of the exercise for another 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then there is another break until we go to the third phase and the same applies at the end of the third phase the last phase of the exercise will be the last 10 days, which will see the registration team in the fourth polling station in that cluster. Okay. And uh, if I may quickly give you the dates for the phases, for instance, when we start on the 24th of March, mm -hmm. that's the first phase of 10 days will end on 2nd April. Okay. So from 24th March to 2nd April, they will be in particular registration centers in the cluster. Okay. And this will be across the whole country. Okay. So the first phase will end on 2nd April. Uh -huh. 
And then the second phase will begin on 4th April. When they move to the second cluster. Yes. No, they don't move to they the second move. cluster. You know, the cluster is a collection of registration centers. Okay. And one team, one registration team, has been assigned to that cluster. Okay. So all that the registration mm. team will do mm. is that for the period of the 40 days mm. registration, mm -hmm. they will remain in that cluster. Okay. They don't move to any other cluster. Okay. But within the cluster, there will be movement. Within the cluster, there will be movement. Right. They will spend 10 days at the registration center okay. for a phase and then move to another polling station okay. for another 10 days. Okay for a second phase, a third phase, and the fourth and final phase. All right. And so the second phase begins on 4th of April and will end on 13th April. And then the third phase will begin 15th of April mm. and end on 24th of April. The last and final phase will begin on 26th April and end on 5th of May. Okay. So that is how the registration has been uh, arrange. Let me ask you this. I, I want to go onto the telephone lines and introduce Kwesi Jonah into the discussion. But really, a quick follow-up so I don't forget it. Um, basically, talking about the cluster and the centers within the cluster. Um, you know, if, if we mentioned that, for example, there may be four centers in each cluster, and the officials are within that cluster. How are, are people in the area or whatever you are calling the cluster? supposed to wait for that group to come near them or as long as they are within that cluster they can travel and go there and go and register because you know how people behave when it comes to these matters people hold on to those cards like prize money mm -hmm. and you may be surprised that by getting to the third phase or fourth phase there may not even be that much activity because in the beginning everybody wants to go and register how well, does it work out? yes uh, <clears throat> apparently we we've we foresaw this mm -hmm. and we have planned for it mm -hmm. What we've done is for each cluster, yes. and in, on each, in each team, we have what we call a queue manager, who actually is one of the officials in the team, and he would do on the spot voter education. So what he's supposed to do is to ask applicants as they come, where do you live? And the applicant says, I live across here. He will tell the applicant, we will be at your end oh. this day. So, there's a queue manager who will be going around finding out whether people have actually shifted. Mm. This is to make sure that, like you say, mm. people don't really trunk to the first police station okay. and then leave their own police station. Interesting. Mm. Mr. Kwesi Jonah is on the line. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, let me ask you quickly. We are discussing the biometric register. And uh, yeah. where we have elect officials high-ranking officials of the EEC in the studio with us explaining it to us. From where you sit as a political scientist, a political science lecturer, a governance expert, what do you make of the latest attempt to register all Ghanaians? Uh, I think it is in the, a step in the right direction. Uh, once we have decided that we are going to do biometric registration, it means the manual registration we have done in previous years will not be needed. So we have to start the process all over to register everybody. I think it's a step in the right direction. Are you comfortable with the dates announced by the EC and the manner in which they want to go about it in terms of the clusters chosen, the centers within it, the dates, the fact that there has been a pilot? Are you, do you like it? Are you satisfied? Uh, so far, no serious problem, except that I have not heard the EC officials right in your studio addressing some of the fundamental problems that are associated with registration. Um, why do we want to move away from manual registration and go over to biometric registration? A few reasons. One, because in the past, when we did the manual registration, there was multiple registration, there was bloated register, and therefore opportunities were created for some people to do multiple voting. Now, in this pilot, in this pilot, I, the, the, the report on the pilot is not yet out. We don't know when you could have a report on the pilot. On the pilot, did anybody observe or notice any attempt on the part of uh, people to do register more than once? And what happened? That affecting so. The, the, the main reason we're moving on to biometric registration, in my opinion, is that we want to avoid the problems of the past. And I want to see how this pilot 
really um, resolved uh, this problem? Were there any attempts? What, what happened? That's the first, first thing. The second thing is that, um, if you know, the biometric registration can solve some problems, cannot solve all, but cannot solve all the problems. For example, if somebody who is 15 comes to a Flint uh, center to register, uh, there's absolutely no way the machine is going to tell that this is an underage person. You cannot. Um, during this pilot, did we observe any attempt by anybody uh, to do underage registration? And how did we deal with it? But the other problem that, you know, in my opinion, um, uh, 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 may concern people like me is that we know for a fact that the EC is going to create more constituencies. Now, we are doing the registration at a time when we do not know where these constituencies are going to be. As a layman, I want to find out when the registration, biometric registration exercise has been completed by 5th May, no new constituencies. How are we going to deal with the new constituencies that may be created? I mean, these are questions uh, for which the general public may want answers. I think I'll get the answers for you right away. And let me also inform you, uh, viewers, that we have been joined on the line at this stage by Mr. Kwejo Usufri, who's General Secretary of the MPP. I'll be getting to him pretty shortly. But let's get some of those concerns answered, as put out by uh, Mr. Kwesi Jonah. Yeah, we, with the pilot, we actually simulated a lot of the threats mm. and some of the challenges that we expected. Mm. So we had people going around registering more than once in different locations. Oh. And we've managed to see that really this has been seen by the system. And those who also came to the same registration centers were actually uh, identified by the system. In the case of uh, underage and those who are not qualified, we still are going to use the old system mm -hmm. that is the administrative system that we have, that is the challenge system, mm -hmm. and having people to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. So all these things were put into place. We did a few tests in two or three polling stations. And we are going to bring out the results to tell the public that we are very confident that the system we are putting in place will work. What about the issue of the creation of constituencies what Mr. Kuzijona raised? I think it's a very critical matter. Well, um, you know, the commission contemplates creating additional constituencies. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody who has followed our registration exercise uh, and has examined our voter ID cards critically mm -hmm. would have realized that um, it doesn't matter at all if registration is done before the creation of constituencies. Um, our, registration, our voter ID cards have certain codes, and the codes fall within a district so that you can have a two constituency district, a three constituency district. Yet, it is the district code that is essential mm. in our registration exercise, and that is what is reflected on the voter ID cards that we issue out. So even if we do the registration and we give the district code, mm. and a constituency is created out of that district, mm. it is not going to disturb the arrangement in any way, because it will always still bear the code for that particular district. And so when the constituencies are created after the registration exercise, there isn't going to be any problems at all. Good evening to you, Mr. Kojo Usufri, if you can hear me. Good evening, my brother. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, of course, I'm sure you know we are discussing the biometric register. What would be your initial comments on this matter? Do you like, uh, are you happy with what is happening so far? Well, the... Um, initially, a lot of people felt that the process uh, appeared to be slow. But from our observation, as the days you know went on, the you know the, 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 there was you know an, an improvement in the in the in the slow nature of it. So uh, in areas where, for instance, the first day they registered say 100 people. The following day, they were able to register 120 and so on and so forth. So in, in, that, in, in that respect, 
uh, we, we, we realize that um, indeed uh, the slow nature you know, may have had something to do with um, you know, some, some of the officers being uh, a little bit uh, you know, apprehensive. You know, but, but by and large, it was okay. The, uh, we also re realized that um, because there were a lot of uh, uh, stimulation elsewhere, um, initially, you know, people did not understand why if you put some candles, you know, to you apply candles to your uh, fingertips, uh, if you could still, you know, go through the, the motions, and then when you, re you removed it, it could still register you as a different person. So, you know, there were a lot of questions that you know, people wanted answers to. But one of the, the difficulties that I found was that the, 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 they did not have uniform instructions, you know, as it were. Uh, those who registered in Ashanti region in Manchia, for instance, some had some pictures taken on the card and, and give it to them and maybe marked as a, a pilot. If you came to Nima, where, where the registration or, or, you know, was also being undertaken, people were not given the card at the end of the day because the officers felt there was no need because it was a pilot you know, you know, program. So it appears you know, that in, in one, one area, you could be given your card with a photograph you know, albeit um, not plain, not clear, you know. And in other areas, you are not given that, in, uh, you, know, you may have gone through the motions, but you will not be given any card, you will not be given any, 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 you know, any printout. So, so we realize that the instructions given to these officers are not uniformly applied. And I think that we need some explanation as to why in some areas you are given a card, even though uh, uh, some as pilot. I am sure the gentleman on the on the telephone line asked it with me. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Kwesi Jonah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Permit me to permit me to call you Kwesi. Nobody will even believe I sat in your political science class. Here oh, I am. No, no. <laughs> Here I am calling you Kwesi. That, that <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you think that verification is still a worthy issue? Yes. Um, it is extremely important that you do verification. Uh, who are you doing the election for? The, 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 the main stakeholders are the political parties, and the majority of political parties have expressed the desire to see biometric verification take place on the day of voting. And so it, it, it will be very unfortunate if we do not go ahead and make sure that we have the equipment to do verification on voting day. Hello, uh, Mr. Uswefriye. Hello, Mr. Uso yes, Free, are you there? Okay, all right, let me ask you. Um, Kwesi Jonah just says that verification is still critical. What is the position of the NPP and generally IPAC, if you know, on this matter? Well, I, I, I think I share, I share the concerns of Kwesi. Um, you know, we as a political party, the New Patriotic Party, you know, have been at the forefront of, of uh, ensuring that uh, on the day of 14, the individual person could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, verified either through the fingerprint or through the you know, pupils or whatever, you know. But the fingerprints are crucial so that it will demonstrate that, you know, the person who whose name uh, or photograph is being shown is the same person whose fingerprints are there. Um, in, in this country, uh, we have we have the, the 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 passport, the issuance of the new passport. What is also, you know, uh, biometrically being used, uh, and, 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 you know, if you lost, say, your passport, and you changed your name and you went for a new passport, as soon as your fingerprints are taken, it will be detected that you are the very person whose name is, say, other A, who came on this date to apply for a passport. It, 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 you know, it is verifiable, and therefore it makes sense. Not only do we have that even in the passport. But even on, 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 on our driving licenses, all these things are there. So it will have been curious if the Electoral Commission, you know, had decided that they were not going to, you know, uh, 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 verify the, the individual who came there. But I think that the question is now settled, that they, 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 we would have, uh, you know, a verifiable process. Uh, and so we are happy 
that, that is going to be done. It, because as you see initially, you know, raised this, this question of multiple, you know, registrants or, 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 or people attempting to vote, you know, several times. Once you have your fingerprints, demonstrate that you are Mr. A or Mr. B and uh, that you are allowed to vote. And, and then the machine is able to reject you if you are tempted to vote uh, twice. Then, then, you know, it will put the fear of all, you know, uh, persons who are talking about bloating registers or who are talking about the fact that in other areas we have multiple registrations and so on and so forth. So, and that it will give credible, you know, a, 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 a process to, to our, 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 you know, uh, political you know, journey that we have, we have you, know, uh, you know, set for ourselves. So, so I, I'm very happy that the EC, I don't know, they saw some sense in, in what political parties have all been coming for. I, even at the, at the time that the NDC appears not to have understood the process, by and large, they came round to, to, to accept that uh, we ought to have a, a, a verification. You know, and, and, and therefore, I've not seen any political party uh, to date uh, who is opposed to the verification. So, Hubert, it's a settled matter now. We are yes. going to have verification. Okay. I wonder why we had such a long debate about it in the past. Well, <laughs> I, th I think we have to make sure that we have consensus on the issue. Okay. And also make sure the, the funds that is required, we are also assured that it will be coming. We, we've passed that stage and now waiting to implement it. So let me ask you, Christian, what is a person required to uh, provide on the day of registration? And what happens to a person who says, I don't have any of the things you're asking for? Well, uh, first of all, let me talk about the qualification for registration right. as a voter. Okay. Um, the regulations say that um, for somebody to be registered as a voter, the person must first of all be a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. and uh, that he must be 18 years or above. And um, he must also be of sound mind and must be resident in the electoral area where he seeks to be registered mm -hmm. and must not be uh, barred by any law or prevented by any law enforced from registering as a voter. Okay. And, um, you know, in the past, uh, we only uh, opened the flag gates for people who were eligible to go to the registration center and anybody who appeared unless the person was challenged just went through the process without uh, tendering any document uh, proving his eligibility. And um, that process was somehow abused uh, to the extent that some unscrupulous uh, people, uh, even though were not qualified, money to get their names onto the voters' register, especially with particular reference to minors uh, who, because uh, they are underage, should not be registered as voters, somehow money to get their names on the voters' register. So this time, the regulation is that um, if you're coming to the registration center to apply for registration as a voter, you must tender some evidence that, that actually supports your eligibility. And we're saying that for you to be registered as a voter, you must either have a passport, mm -hmm. which you tender as evidence of your eligibility, mm -hmm. or if you have the national ID card, the, uh, the cards that were generated by the National Identification Authority, you can tender that as evidence. If you have a driver's license, we also accept that. And uh, if you have the old voter's ID card, uh, it will also be proof that uh, you are indeed eligible to be registered as a voter. We recognize that um, there are still people out there who may not have any of these cards at all. Absolutely. Yes, and so another that we will not disenfranchise people mm -hmm. on account of the fact that they may not possess any of these documents. Mm -hmm. We're saying that if you are eligible to register as a voter and yet you don't have any of these documents that we're talking about, yes. then you would need uh, two registered voters to stand uh, surety or guarantee wow. your uh, qualification or your eligibility to be registered as a voter. Mm. All that you need is two people 
who qualify to be registered as voters and who have already registered to come and uh, witness your registration and uh, vouch for you that, yes, indeed, they know you, you qualify to be registered as a voter, and then um, we'll put you on the voters register. But let me say that mm. the people who guarantee your registration also stand uh, to suffer some uh, penalty if it is found out later that uh, you indeed do not qualify to be registered as a voter, and yet that fact being known to them, they nevertheless went ahead to guarantee your um, registration. In that case, uh, they will be guilty of you know having provided false information for the purpose of securing registration for an unqualified individual. And that is why I would want to sound a, caution, a word of caution to all those who would go out there to guarantee the registration of uh, people that they must satisfy themselves that they indeed know the persons whose registrations they're going to guarantee very well before they do that. Quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Imperial Leather, now with classy new look. Imperial Leather, one of life's little luxuries. In today's challenging world, information technology has become the one-stop option. And Beacon Ghana, an IT solutions and training provider, offers you the requisite training in Microsoft, Cisco, Oracle, Unix, Linux, and many IT courses. The Beacon IT student, after writing the external exams, qualifies with internationally recognized certificates, and job placements and attachments in reputable firms are made available to students who excel. Lectures are in the mornings, afternoons, evenings, and on weekends. Locate Beacon Ghana IT on the second floor, Shamas House, Nansuman Junction, on the Kaneshi or Doko Highway. Call plus 233-302-240027 or visit www.beaconghana.com. Beacon Ghana, the IT solutions and training providers. Thank you very much for staying with us. I think that we'll, we'll just take the final comments of our guests on the telephone lines, and then we'll come back to the studio to take your messages and also get some closing uh, educational bits from the EC. Uh, let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Kosi Jonah. So before you go and before you leave us, what will be your closing remarks? What are some of the topical things out there you want the EC to still look out for? And yeah. uh, what do you think is worth commenting when on? When Mr. Perry um, was um, checking the qualifications for a voter in Ghana, he mentioned two key criteria. First, the person must be a Ghanaian, and second, must be 18 years or above. Then he moved on to emphasize minors, people who are below 18 who try to register as voters. The other side of the problem is Indian registration. Apart, the person must first of all be a Ghanaian, and second, be 18 years or above. The problem with the present process of producing some kind of documentary evidence is that if an Indian had in the past managed to register as a voter, then all he has to do is to bring his old voter ID and get registered. So we are perpetuating something 
that is illegal under our laws. What measures, especially <laughs> um, using development at the, at, the, at, the, at the pilot, what measures are we introducing to ensure that even if an alien managed to register in the past, he does not, he does not this time around, simply come to flash a manual voter ID and get registered under the biometric registration process. Those are very useful points that you just raised, Mr. Jonah. I have to thank you. So, yeah, I, I, in the close, closing remarks, I would like somebody, for somebody to, 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 to get touch on it, okay. if, if it is possible. I'll get them to touch on it, and I also hope yeah. you invite me to your politics in Ghana class one of these days. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure the notes have changed. So beyond the the, the, the new districts that we have and all that, I like to hear okay. what your analysis is on. But you'll get your quick response right now. If you just hold on and hear it. Yeah, yeah. I think the situation about how we can attest yes. the validity of even the documents that we are bringing yes. does not rest only with the electoral commission. Yeah. Anyone who brings a false document or makes a false representation, we have a long rope in making sure that if any Ghanaian mm -hmm. or anybody who's also, who can be a voter mm -hmm. comes to complain that this person you registered last time and you registered again is not a Ghanaian, we can still go retrospective and then deal with the person. So it is not a done deal. It's possible somebody can bring a passport and the person may also not be a Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. So these things are not definite. Once you enter into the system, it doesn't mean you cannot be challenged or objected to. Okay. So anytime, anywhere, if somebody objects to your registration, we should go back, retrace our steps, and then slap the necessary uh, sanctions. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Jonah, for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening. <coughs> uh, let me get final comments from Kojo Wusue Free. Uh, Sir John, if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. Well, yes, the, uh, in addition to what Kwesi you know, talks about, I think one of the, or some of the challenges that uh, uh, we are not very clear with is the fact that the National Health Card, the you know, NHIS card, that the EC, it, 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 you know, is asking for as one of the, you know, documents that you can bring. Mm. We do know, and we have it's uncredible information, that there are some unscrupulous persons, you know, mm -hmm. now making cards for people, for purposes of, 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 of using it as an ID to be brought. And the, if you look at the, the law that established the National Health Insurance you know, Scheme, you know, even if one were not a Ghanaian, once one was required even to have a national you know, a, no health card. So, the, you know, bringing that card would not necessarily mean that the person is a Ghanaian. And therefore, we should be very careful, you know, of, of bringing, introducing these, you know, these things in. And, and like, you know, it has been rightly acknowledged, you know, passports, you know, it's not everybody who holds a Ghanaian passport is a, is a Ghanaian. And, and we, we do know that as a matter of fact. And, and, and then if you also go to rare areas, and even in some areas where majority of us do not even have, you know, driving licenses or, or, or you know, uh, uh, these cars, I think that the, the, the local commission is making itself unnecessarily burdensome to be requiring these things. Because if you have somebody who stands there and would always be challenging somebody who comes and say, look, you don't have this, I'm not going to allow you to, to, to register because the EC makes it a requirement. If that happens, and you don't have many people who have already registered and gone, it means that the person is going to stay until the, 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 those two persons who are now required to, to register or who qualify and have some documents to do so can now come and fight for them. I think that that would bring, you know, uh, uh, chaos in, 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 into the process and that, you know, these things are being, you know, uh, uh, looked at again. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to help the process. And especially in the rural areas where we have people who come and they don't have anything, and then the, the first person who comes there. So who is going to, you know, back for who? When, so when, when the first person who comes, you know, has no card, he has nothing, and we have not had anybody who has these things to, to have registered to vote for them. So, Sir John, that, you know, what do you recommend should vote. happen? What do you recommend should happen in that situation? If you don't have anything, you will not be allowed to register? Well, from the EC's point of view, that is what it is. Because if you don't have any of these things, and then until two persons 
who have already registered yes. can vouch for you. It means you cannot register. I'm saying that it is a recipe for, for disaster. So and in the alternative, what should those happen? Things, those rules are not important in, in this exercise. We have people who stand there who will be able to challenge or, 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 or some, some people if they think that they are not Ghanaians or that they don't qualify. That alone should, should, should for us suffice rather than to say that you know, if you don't have uh, uh, this card or that card, that card, that we know it is easy to obtain anyway. You know, if you don't have that, then you need to get two people to come and fight for you. And those two persons should have already been registered. I think that, you know, that, that, uh, that is not acceptable to, to, any, uh, to, to, to us as a political party. Thank you very much, Sir John, for your views. Could you also free as General Secretary of the MPP? Enjoy the rest of your evening, sir. Thank you. Let's take some of the messages that have come in quickly and um, as and when we re need responses, I hope you can give me a snappy response so I can move on to the next one because I have just uh, four minutes or so to go. And Amala Umar Kabo, what will happen to our brothers whose fingers have been chopped off? And some others who have used their hoe and cutlass for a long time, leaving their palms with no lines. <laughs> what do we also do? I don't know about <laughs> leaving your yeah, palm with fingers, no lines. Fingers which have been amputated, there yes. is a solution for that. Okay. The system can recognize amputated fingers and it will record the fingers that are okay. In the case of those who don't have any fingers at all, that is those with the amputated hands, mm. we are going to use their facial recognition to identify them. So we have all this set up, and it is automatic. Okay. The system will recognize it and then ask for the operator's intervention. Okay. What uh, Mr. Free said. Mm. In fact, we have in the past not been asking for documents for identification and this has been one of our problems and challenges in the past. So we have taken the steps not only on our own, but with the political parties themselves to introduce some sort of identification so that at least we can clean the system. I think Ghana is old among one of few countries we do not ask for any document when they are doing voter registration. And we want to put an end to that. I believe if Mr. Afriye will know we set out a legal committee and also a technical committee mm -hmm. to look at some of the modalities for this registration. And this thing came up. Once it has gone through, then it means that it was agreed upon, at least to some extent, by the political parties. Interesting. Mamiya Pia says, I would like to know if I can vote in any part of the country on the day of election if I registered in Accra. No. Okay. No, um, you have to vote where you register. Yes, um, she will still have to go and re vote where she registered. Okay. Unless, of course, um, she is able to transfer her vote to Accra, she has to go and re vote where she registered. So that's your answer right there. Unless you can transfer to Accra, where you register is where you vote. Hadi Peter Tewi, I thank you, Neil, for the good work you are doing. Thank you for watching. Can you please explain the piloting for those of us in the village? Thank you. Wow, I don't know when you joined, but are we able to do this in, yeah, the pilot is in a 30 test. seconds? Is a, what we call a real test of the system in a small area that okay. is over a small population to okay. see whether what we do on the 24th mm. will be successful. Okay. We want to identify problems and then find solutions to them. So that is the pilot. So you know about dress rehearsal, don't you? <laughs> Independence, when the children are going to march on the 6th, on the 5th or the 4th, make them pilot. march in the school to see how the marching will be on the 6th. That is the pilot. Yeah. So it's done in only a few places in Ghana. But if you, you register, which we've been told or educated on, it doesn't mean you don't register when the, the proper registration begins. It was just to test the system and how it runs. I hope I'm correct with that. Yes. Kojo Apia Emmanuel uh, says we must be each brother's, each other's keeper to help this registration exercise. I think that's well put. We have to be our civil, uh, civil, civil people also on our guard. Godwin Doche, SkyD, are all logistics ready? How far has the EEC gone with the teachers' participation in the registration process? Logistics and teachers' participation. Well, insofar as logistics are concerned, I think that we have nearly everything that we need for the biometric registration, okay. especially with regard to equipment and the kind of forms that we're going to use at the registration centers. Mm. Uh, we have already distributed the equipment to the various regions and to the districts. Okay. And um, as of now, we're still sending the registration forms for distribution to the districts. Okay. So the commission mm -hmm. is um, ready for the exercise on the 24th. <coughs> okay. 
Dominic yeah. Danso, okay, that, is that it? Or you still have a little more to say? <laughs> I'll give you a little break. Uh, there's some water down there for you to drink as I read the, 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 the other ones. Um, Dominic Danso, CID, says, from what the PRO said, fingerprints will be taken. But what device will they use to identify these fingerprints? Of individuals during voting time, what will be used to identify the fingerprints? I don't, I don't know that what. The, what you call the verification. The, the verification. That's the verification equipment. equipment. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So, Dominic, that's your answer right there. Now that we have verification, we'll verify to see whether it is you, mm -hmm. the one with the fingerprints that was captured, who mm -hmm. actually is appearing to vote. But I don't know if there was something more you wanted to say about the uh, teachers' participation. Absolutely. Um, yes, um, you know we have depended on the teachers uh, over the years. Uh, precisely because um, in every part of this country there is at least a teacher who is readily available to be used for our exercises. Mm. And again, we have worked with them for such a long time that um, they have acquired some experience in the kind of work we want our officials to do. Mm. And that is why we tend to depend heavily on the teachers. It has never happened in the history of this commission that the Ghana Education Service is restraining teachers from participating in our exercise. This is the first of its kind. And um, as we speak now, a lot of teachers have been penciled down mm. to be used in this biometric registration exercise. And uh, the numbers are quite uh, big. We think that if we should lose the services of all the teachers, uh, it would affect the exercise in a way. And so what the commission intends doing in the next few days is that uh, we're going to have discussions with the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service. Mm. And we'll look at uh, the possibility of the employers, that is the Ghana Education Service, mm. uh, at least making it possible for us to use some of the teachers if we cannot use all of them that we have penciled down at the moment. Related to that yes. is Robert uh, Danso's text. He says, since teachers have been excluded, which people did they recruit and have they been trained? I'm interested. So it's not exactly correct to say teachers have been excluded. Is that what you're saying? For now, we cannot say teachers have been entirely excluded mm. because um, we're still going to see the Ghana Education Service officials or the Ghana Education Service. Mm. Uh, we believe that um, there is a break, uh, the holidays within the registration period. Mm. And at the same time, you know, it is not every teacher that is handling an examination class. Um, barely two weeks into the registration exercise, schools will be on holidays. And so that means that a lot of the teachers will be free over the period. So um, it is possible for, to, for us to find some teachers whose schedule okay. may permit okay. uh, them to be part of this exercise. And that is what we're trying to uh, talk to the Ghana Education Service about. And who else will be there apart from the teachers? Because he's asking who else you are recruiting and have you trained them? Well, for now, the people we have uh, Recruited are not all teachers. We have some um, national service personnel in there. Yeah. We have uh, people who are also engaged in some other jobs uh, who have some experience in IT. In fact, some of them are very, very skillful in IT. They are the ones that we have recruited mostly for the uh, role of data entry class at the registration centers. Uh, the bulk of the teachers are in the registration officer category. And um, we think that if it becomes impossible for us to use them, we can still find some people who we can train quickly for them to uh, perform those tasks for us. Okay. But we wouldn't want to lose the experience of the teachers mm. uh, because we've, ha we've had to work with them for a couple of years now. and they have uh, proven to be very, very reliable in these exercises. Okay, we have to bring this to a close. I have more questions than uh, time will permit us to answer, but I hope we can do this uh, quickly. Francis Abekan Hooper, how are we going to identify the registration book since it is not manual? Okay, interesting question there. Well, there will be physical register printed okay. as well as the okay. verification equipment. Francis, so we that's your answer? Have, yeah. So it's there, but it can be printed out, and that's how you can identify it. That's your answer there, Slim King. Hi, Nee, this biometric registration is going to cause traffic because the registrars are very slow. If they spend 10 minutes per head 
how long would it take to register 100 people per day? The EC should set up. Okay, Dominic Danso, mm -hmm. CID. So you can write anything you want to respond to on block, and then we, we will go. Uh, okay, I've dealt with Dominic. Uh, Daniel Ofori says, the citizens and the EC should all be sincere to each other so that the exercise can be incident-free. As for the politicians, they will always create ways that would benefit them. EC, be firm on the ground, and he writes the firm in capital letters, mm -hmm. and says, Ni, keep up the good work. They're always behind you. Thank you. You watch us and make us go on. Frank Ejebwedi, was the exercise peaceful? And were there any aliens who tried to register? I think he's talking about the pilot. Whether it was peaceful, whether you had any aliens trying to register. We'll get a response when I'm ready with the last two. Fiona, myopia Fiona, Fiona, interesting name. How is the Electoral Commission dealing with people with disabilities? I mean, people whose fingers are chopped off. It has been answered. I'm sure you heard it. Gideon Chawoji, in which districts was it? What, what did the pilots? Um, okay, you're talking about Volta regions. I said, which districts in the Volta region? Did you have the pilot? So maybe we can well, start Well, Water region, we did it in K2 South. That mm -hmm. is Denu and then Adaklu, Anube District. Okay. Precisely, so we did it in uh, Adaklu, Waya. Okay. So All right. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. And then, uh, yes, uh, and then uh, in terms of the, the queues and then the population that we are going to handle, yes. it is one of these reasons mm -hmm. we are embarking on a 40 days registration as opposed to 10 days. And we, we hope within 40 days, mm -hmm. we'll be able to capture all that we are supposed to capture. Mm -hmm. The initial rush is expected, and we are making plans that if a polling station is over congested, mm -hmm. we'll move another kit over there to make sure that we can deal with them. So all these have been put in place to make sure that uh, the queues are not going to go too long. Quickly, I and, and mm -hmm. to add to what he just said, um, you know, we anticipated that the queues may be long and that is why the commission has increased the number of registration centers mm. you know every registration center is a polling station and because we anticipated that uh, there's been a new exercise uh, the anxiety and everything can lead to long queues being formed at the registration centers the right. commission has increased mm. the number of registration centers across the country from 21,000 to 23,000 and we hope by that that we'll be able to reduce the length of the queues at the various registration centers. Hmm. What about the, I have a question here which says that some are even afraid that the system you're talking about could leave them with cancer. Yes, uh, it, it, is, it is one of the things uh, that um, the pilot exercise has actually uh, disproved. Mm -hmm. You know, it is one of the reasons why we give the cars out to people to go and show to their neighbors that they have been through the process, their fingerprints were taken by the scanner, and uh, nobody has suffered any demise for putting his fingers on the device to be scanned. And uh, we want to uh, sound a very clear message to the people out there that the scanners uh, do not have any anything that will cause people to contract cancer mm -hmm. or develop cancer if they go through the, uh, the biometric registration. I believe that a lot of them have registered with the National Identification Authority. The scanner we are using is not different from what the National Identification Authority use, except that this time we're using a scanner that can take four fingers at a time. Okay. And uh, for those who have acquired passports and driver's license, they always put their fingers on scanners. And uh, since these biometric equipment were introduced in this country in all forms, uh, nobody has ever contracted cancer for putting his fingers on okay. the scanner to be scanned.